So upon the release of Old, I saw a lot of people commenting on how its director has no sense of human emotion or human dialogue, that he misreads the way people should speak, emote, feel, or interact with one another in his films. We're talking about, of course, M. Night Shyamalan. And when you take a look at his track record, it's easy to see why people harbor that thought about his craft. What? No! And I understand that sentiment, it's not unfounded. I happen to be a fan of M. Night's work, with a few exceptions, but in both the films I like and dislike, I completely see why people have these complaints. I do believe, however, that the idea that Minaj doesn't have a sense for emotion and sensitivity is completely insane. If his latest film proves anything, it's that the opposite is true. He's very much in tune with the points he wants to get across through his characters on that deep emotional level, which is something that tends to work wonderfully in the horror thriller genre, something he's obviously very familiar with. Old focuses on a group of people that go to a beach where time runs increasingly faster, and there's seemingly no escape from this haunted place. It's almost like a little chamber drama where the sense of anxiety and distrust keeps building and building, and little by little, in slow burn fashion, we witness the unfolding of the madness, the rage, the violence, the terror, and yes, the emotional. But hey, just because it works on that level doesn't mean that the other aspects of the film are as pristine, as is the case with M. Night's entire filmography. If you want to talk about the dialogue, yeah, I, I, I get it. I'm Jaren. I'm a nurse. He aims for stale, weird-sounding dialogue that comes across as inhuman. Which never works. It's so nice traveling with you. Thank you, Irene. I was so excited, nervous. It's sure great to have you to talk to. Remember, I'll be watching for you on the big screen. Okay, Irene. Never works. I thought I was the only one who ate spaghetti that way. Me and my dad. Later, of course, I found out that everyone eats spaghetti the exact same way. Exact same way. Exact same way. Never works. The club doesn't make the player. That's true. Never works. Hey, you son of a bitch! If you don't smile, I'm gonna kill you! Okay? I've killed before and I will kill again. I will pick up your brains all over the floor. You came out of my womb and I'll stick you right back in my womb. If you don't smile, I'm going to kill you! Look, it's not my intention to belittle the work of these other filmmakers, but to illustrate that, yes, some creatives do like to employ an unconventional style of dialogue writing and delivery. Sometimes it sticks the landing, and some other times it doesn't. For a lot of people it's often a miss when it comes to Shyamalan's work, and I understand that. But I happen to either not care about it, or find it charming enough to keep myself engaged. Old is no exception. Characters will often state the obvious and deliver exposition in very unnatural ways. For the record, I know most people who die on vacation die from sun exposure, overexertion, overindulgence of food or alcohol or a, or a mixture of all of the above 99.4% of the time. Kids go around asking adults their name and their profession, which is a little quirky. What are your names and what do you do for a living? I can see that. Kids are weird. But make no mistake, if you feel like those elements detract from the overall experience, you can't deny the craft of Shyamalan's camera. Or should I say, Michael Yolaki's camera. Like their previous collaborations, the team storyboards the whole thing, something that perhaps came as a benefit considering the source material is Sandcastle, a French graphic novel. They also aimed to shoot the least possible amount of standard coverage. And it shows. Each shot is unique in its own way, always revealing a little more about their environment or characters. Always showing you just enough so that your mind can get the gears working. And when it doesn't show you that much, the restraint of the shot is its strength, more often than not hiding a mysterious element that will later be revealed with a sense of whiplash. Much like the use of off-screen space, off-centered shots, characters towering over the frame, permeating the film with the sense that something is wrong. It's clear to me that Minaj is at the top of his game. But still, I contend that the essential thing that makes Old a great movie, for me anyway, is the heart at its core. The criticism I've been seeing thrown around in reference to this film and Minaj's body of work overall. The emotion. 
It's no secret that Shyamalan is a spiritual filmmaker, and plenty of his films deal with that struggle with disbelief. And the way things often play out is people finding their way to have their disbelief turned upside down. This doesn't necessarily mean religion, like in Signs, which is a great movie. Overcoming a crisis of faith can mean many things. You could argue that any mainstream film ever made is actually about overcoming a crisis of faith. It's kind of like embedded in regular screenplay structure. But Manoj approaches this in his own particular style, which revolves around reaching an emotional payoff. He's not all that interested in seeing characters get from A to B, going through the three acts of a conventional story structure. Remember early in his career when he kind of adopted the brand of the twist? What a twist! You'd go see an M. Night film for the thrills, the suspense, the mystery, but most important of all was that twist ending. What is up his sleeve? What card is he gonna pull? What magic trick is he going to wow us with? See, when done right, that works well as a storytelling tool, but at the end of the day, it's just that. A tool. Yes, Bruce Willis is a ghost. That's shocking and clever and provocative and mischievous. But what really leaves an impact is him coming to terms with that and saying his last goodbye to the woman he loves and letting go. That is how M. Night employs his techniques to milk the emotion out of the stories he tells. They don't work because there's a twist at the end. They work because they're crafted with a passion for sentimentality at their core where you feel the gut punch in certain moments. Like the tenderness of a mother coming to terms with her son and having them open up to each other. Or the warmth of a father embracing his children. Or holding the hand of the person you love and pulling them away from danger. Or a growing sense of community when a group of people come together to accomplish one single good deed. Or the desire to be with the person you love and risking everything to be with them amidst the apocalypse. Like I said before, this is not to say that the emotional resonance that I have with these films completely excuse the other flaws that might be found in the craft. However, I can't help but appreciate the way Minaj manages to bring out the child in me and make me tear up with these arcs that profuse sentimentality all across the board. What the fuck can I say? I'm a softie. But definitely the case where it works best for me is in Unbreakable and Glass, films where a lot of the emotional weight befalls on Sam Jackson's character as he strives to find his place in a world that has treated him with bitterness and denial, and ultimately tell the world he exists. His arc of wanting to be seen and reject the oppressors who tell him he's not what he believes he is, is one that I find truly beautiful. Yes, he's a villain and a lot of innocent people find tragic ends because of the means to his end, but it would be misconstrued not to find the glimpses of humanity in his method and way of thinking. My favorite scene in Glass and one that almost brings me to tears is when Mr. Glass approaches Kevin, overtaken by the personality of Patricia, after she's been confronted with the possibility that perhaps the Horde isn't special. The beast isn't a supernatural force and Kevin might simply be a disturbed, ill young man. <laughs> What's upsetting you, Patricia? What if he can't do these extraordinary things? What if he is just unwell? Like you. And what Glass does is comfort her. Everything extraordinary can be explained away, and yet it is true. I think deep down you know this. Everything we will see and do will have a basis in science, but it will have limits. This is the real world, not a cartoon. And yet some of us don't die from bullets. Some of us can still bend steel. That is not a fantasy. Hmm. Don't listen to the oppressor trying to shut you down and belittle you. Don't listen to the people who tell you you're not special. No, you are valid and you deserve to be seen. The fact that this message is delivered in an interaction between two villains is kind of astounding to me. And of course, old isn't without its instances of underlying beauty, something we can easily find in the premise of the film. 
facing your own mortality, seeing your children grow up, seeing your parents grow old, facing people in a time of crisis where there's a thin line between confrontation and working together. And the reason these topics can resonate with us is because if you take away the supernatural element, those are still things we have to live with. Getting old and seeing people you love grow older can be a beautiful thing, but also a terrifying thought. The knowing that everything by law of nature has an end. And Shyamalan puts it on display expertly in his Twilight Zone-esque thriller with themes that resemble something like Sinecdoche, New York. Elevating that fear of aging, disease, the inevitability of decay, the horror of missing out on your child's life, all the while dealing with family, the people that are closest to you. From the perspective of the parents, of course, because their priority is to protect their children, and when it comes to the perspective of the children, that's actually something that Manoj treasures and employs throughout his filmography. Him being a fan of Spielberg, I feel like he's always taken that aspect of awe and amazement found in his films, often seen through the eyes of children. A pure, innocent perspective which also gives way to a much more frightening atmosphere when the fantastical becomes scary. It's also a great tool to use considering that his films tend to focus on a complete failure to properly communicate between adults, sometimes amongst themselves, but especially with children, which is why he likes to undertake the relationship between parent and children. And when there's a family dysfunction, it has a harsher impact from the eyes of a child. Like two parents arguing out loud about how to tell something important to their children in the smoothest way possible, while their children are right outside listening to the whole show. Or when Trent, still with the mind of a young boy but in the body of a teenager, confronts his father telling him he's going to marry this girl he just met and he's never going to divorce her. He is judging his father. Naturally, Guy and Prisca's angle is also substantial in the development of the plot. These two characters and their relationship actually gives way to some of the more tender moments in Shyamalan's career. Even though the elements of horror are still there, I found one of the major turns to be when Guy loses his sight and Prisca loses her hearing. Their reaction isn't driven by panic or terror, and if it is, they don't externalize it any longer. It's as if they simply give in to the fact that they've now reached that stage of life where the senses start to drift away, something everyone eventually deals with. Only here it happens within the span of a single day. Not only does the couple seem to be more accepting of what's coming to them, but they also become more affectionate with one another. They leave their fighting behind, realizing that the most important thing is to be with one another at that very moment. Present. Intimate. Without holding a grudge. When everything else is stripped down and they let go, even of their children whom they've seen grow before their eyes, all they have is each other. A lifetime coming to an end in a gentle fashion, regardless of the terror that surrounds them. And that is life. Beautiful. Scary. Painful. And ultimately, peaceful. How the fuck can I not love this movie? It's one of the best and again, just for the detractors, I understand that this film and its ending might not be everyone's cup of tea. As for how the film ends, when I saw Manoj with all this equipment observing the characters from afar, I was like, wait, what the f- Is this some kind of Kiarostami, Khodorovsky kind of twist? Has this been like a movie all along? Yes, I know, M. Night chooses to wrap things up with a nice bow and tie, a little tongue-in-cheek, with Trent and Maddox fighting their way out of the beach, like the two little kids that could, and end up taking down the evil organization in like 15 minutes. <laughs> I, I get it. It's a little too tidy, a little too... But, I don't know, f f fuck I, I, it's nice to see a happy ending for once. It feels like a good culmination for these characters who have aged rapidly. Notice how as they grow older in the middle portion of the film, they still somewhat behave according to the ages they had at the beginning. Yet, when you see them in their 50s the next morning, they have adopted a more somber attitude. They're much more serious, less panicky, more accepting, kind of like how their parents behaved approaching the end of their lives. It was a traumatic day filled with a lifetime's worth of conflicts. And that's changed these children. And even so, in that final interaction between the manager's nephew and Trent, the little child still recognizes the kid he'd just met the day before. As if a lifetime worth of conflict 
and change simply cannot break who these characters are at their very core. When it comes to M. Night Shyamalan, to me, the good will almost always outweigh the bad, and I cannot wait for what he has next in store. I want to make the most distinct pieces of art uh, for the largest audience. I want the pieces to have teeth, I want them to be challenging, and I want them to represent me, and I have the belief that the more distinct and different they are, the more they're going to resonate with you guys over time.